Well, good morning, and welcome to today's professional development session on quizzing in Canvas Studio. I'm Dave Giberson, an old instructional design coordinator from Online Learning Pathways. And um, this morning we're going to talk about one of the neater features in our Canvas Studio uh, video system, which, as the name suggests, is related to our Canvas Learning Management System, not the same system, but very tightly integrated with it. Canvas Studio provides us with a, um, a very powerful video repository, a hosting service like YouTube, I think YouTube, and a, a creation tool, a video creation tool kind of a one-stop video services, instructional video services system that is tightly integrated with Canvas. Very easy to share what you have in Canvas Studio with your, uh, with your students. So what we're going to talk about this morning is one of the neater features of Canvas Studio, and that's the ability to embed simple objective quizzes right into a video stored in any video stored in Canvas Studio. Um, this is um, a very useful feature in that it uh, helps to increase retention and assimilation of the knowledge that you're trying to impart through your instructional videos. To start with, your, when you present material through video as opposed to, say, text, having them read something in a book or in a web page, just by doing that, you tend to increase the retention and the mastery of the material that the student, um, that, uh, the student exhibits. There's a number I hear bandied about is that people tend to remember 80% of what they saw in a video as long as a week later. Numbers aren't nearly that good for text. <laughs> something they read a week ago, something they saw and listened to a week ago, there's the seeing and listening wins out every time. And then if on top of that, you do a timely uh, low stakes quiz that uh, covers the material that's just been presented in the video, you increase retention even more. And there are lots of uh, indications of that in the educational literature. So this technique of quizzing in Canvas Studio uh, utilizes two very powerful instructional strategies that help to ensure that your students uh, learn more effectively. And it's something we have access to for free, and that's very easy to do, as I'm going to show you here. So let's talk a little bit about what this is going to look like and how it works. Uh, you can embed quizzes into, <coughs> excuse me, any video in your Canvas Studio library. Even a video that you may have brought over or linked over from YouTube or Vimeo can have a quiz embedded into it. As a video plays and as you cover various topics, questions pop up on the screen. Simple uh, objective questions, multiple choice, multiple answer, or true false are the question types you can use in Canvas Studio quizzes. And they pop up at relevant moments in the video. So maybe just after you've covered some contact, uh, concept, you can quiz a student on it. And this forces them to rethink, what you, uh, revisit what you've just said, and think about it. And this is a proven strategy for uh, incur or enhancing the student's ability to retain that material. Um, 
and if a student gets to a if a question pops up suddenly that the, that the student doesn't know the answer to because perhaps they were swanning off um, and they need to wait a minute what did, what did he say about that they can go back and rewatch the section of the video that answers that question or that contains the answer to that question it'll automatically take them back to the last question that they saw and allow them to watch it forward again which even in you know is even better repetition is the soul of learning um, and it's it's a they get a benefit comparable to what they get when they revise their lecture notes at the end of the day and of course we know all students do that right oh I always did that I swear uh, <laughs> Uh, and this is something that's fairly painless and, and gives them a lot of the same benefit. Once they answer the question, and the video stops and won't proceed until they answer the question and submit it. And then the video plays until the next question is encountered. And once the video is finished, the student gets feedback on how they did. They see what they got right, what they got wrong. And you can even provide more detailed feedback in the questions if you like. Uh, like uh, the answer to this question is in chapter 3, page four, uh, 46 in the textbook or whatever. Go and look at that again and read that page and, and uh, you'll be more comfortable with this particular concept. So it's a, instructionally it just checks a lot of boxes and really has, uh, great pedagogical value, this, this technique of quizzing in Canvas Studio. So, how do we make Canvas Studio quizzes? Well, the only hard part about making standard uh, Canvas Studio quizzes is figuring out what to ask and where to put it in the video. The nuts and bolts of creating a quiz in Canvas Studio are just really simple, and we're going to demonstrate that now. I'm going to pull Canvas Studio over here where you can see it. By the way, if you're not already in uh, speaker view in your Zoom client, it's probably worth doing that. The little view button in the upper right hand corner of your Zoom screen will allow you to um, select speaker over gallery or immersive view. And that will make it easier to see when I'm presenting here. It'll also make it a little easier if I shrink myself down out of the way here. I don't want to cover anything up. Okay, so let's go to, to access Canvas Studio in Canvas. Uh, you just go to your global access menu here on the left, the gray bar that's always visible, and click the Studio icon near the bottom of the gray bar. And this takes you to your Canvas Studio library, where all of the videos that you've uploaded into Canvas Studio or created in Canvas Studio or linked over from YouTube or Vimeo, this is where they, they live, where you can access them. Only you see your Canvas Studio library. Nobody else can, get, can see the videos in this library unless you share those videos with them deliberately. And we'll talk about how to do that here in a few minutes. But I'm just going to pick a video here uh, that uh, is fairly short and easy to digest. Uh, something that I shot using my little video studio I keep in my pocket, my cell phone or smartphone, on a trip to Yellowstone a couple of weeks ago. Yellowstone Natural pa National Park. A video of bison walking down the <laughs> road right past us there. Um, and, you know, we, we walk around with that amazing video device in our pockets all the time, and we encounter teachable moments all the time. And it's so simple just to pull that... Uh, device out and shoot a short video with some real instructional implications. If this were, if I were teaching a, uh, 
a wildlife biology class or even a general biology class. Never taught wildlife, but I, I did teach general biology for a number of years. And um, having something like this would just be to slip into a, a module in Canvas would just be golden. And so you can capture teachable moments like this and then get uh, uh, add those videos to your Canvas Studio library. And what we're going to do with this video is that we are going to add a quiz to it. Okay, so what's the basic process here? Well, we're going to start by clicking on the little context menu um, that is included in every rectangle, every tile in Canvas Studio for each video that you have. And that's going to enable us to create a quiz. Then we name the quiz and select a couple of options about how the quiz is going to behave. And then we're given a playback window of the video with a little um, white circle with a black plus sign in it that is what we use to insert questions. And um, this allows us not only to insert a question, but to determine where in the video, at what time in the video, we're going to uh, insert it. So let's do that. If I want to use this video as an example here, I just go to the uh, context menu that I have access to before I go in to look at the video, before I view the video. Okay. Before I do that, I click on the context menu and I have the option to create a quiz. Can't miss it. Then I'm asked just a couple of things. I, I got to give it a, the quiz a title because it's possible to embed more than one quiz in the same video and use, uh, you know, use them in different circumstances. So, uh, in this case, we're just going to call this uh, Bison Video Quiz. You can call it anything you want. It doesn't really matter as long as it, you're the only one who's going to see this. It helps you remember what this one is about. I can enter a more detailed description if I need to. I don't think that's necessary in this case. And then I have two um, options I have to select. Um, the first one says hide question markers on the timeline for students. Well, it's possible to, well, by default, I should say, Canvas Studio marks the positions of the questions on the video, on the timeline of the video, on the playback bar of the video when you're playing it. So you can tell when a question is coming. You can tell where the questions are in the video so that they don't pop up as a surprise. That maybe lessens the uh, impact of the questions a little bit. <coughs> so you have the option to hide those markers from students so they don't know how many questions are in the video <laughs> or where the, when they're going to pop up. And they can't just jump ahead to the questions and try to answer the questions and skip their way through the video. <laughs> um, so more often than not, when I'm using this for real, I, um, I turn this on so that the students don't see those question markers during the process of playing the video and taking the quiz. But in the interests of clarity today, to show you how this works, I'm going to leave that off. The other one, um, I'm not going to worry about right now. So once I name the video and decide how I want to set these options, I click get started and I'm given a playback window for the video. Um, and now I can reasonably just start playing the video and we'll see what happens. I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. 
Uh, rather than sharing it this way, I think I'm going to go ahead and share that screen so I can share the sound with you more effectively. So let me share sound and share the, um, the right monitor here with you. Now you're seeing my, the image that's on the monitor that I'm playing the video from. So I just start playing the video and listening to what I'm saying. Here's an example of the type of ad hoc instructional video production you can do with that video studio you carry in your pocket, your smartphone. This is the North Road in Yellowstone National Park. And these are American bison. Scientific name, bison, bison. That's an easy one to remember. Well, let's see if that's true or not. <laughs> okay, the purpose generally of these quizzes is not so much assessment, you know, making it challenging for the students to answer the questions. It's just to get them to think about what you're saying in a, a little bit more active manner. This converts watching a video from a passive learning experience to an active learning experience. And we all know that those active experiences are far more effective. So now I'm going to see if they were asleep or not. I'm going to add a question at this point in the video. And I do that just by clicking on this plus sign here. And I have three question types that I can use in here. They're all simple objective questions. The uh, ever popular multiple choice, true or false, or multiple answer, where there's, there can be more than one right answer. This question seems to me to, allow, to uh, lend itself to multiple choice. So I'm going to select multiple choice, and I get a question creation screen that's not too, diff too different from the one that we uh, um, used to create quiz questions in regular Canvas quizzes. The first thing we're asked to do is add the question stem, which is edu-speak for type the question out, type the text of the question out. So how about what is the scientific uh, name of the American bison? question. Now I have possible answers. How about um, bison americanus? Seems reasonable. <laughs> That's a pretty good uh, incorrect answer, maybe. Or this seems too simple. Bison, bison. If I want more possible answers, I just ask for them. How about uh, uh, buffalo? <laughs> and one more possibility. Um, let's see. Um, uh, something that sounds good. Um, Is it buffalo? Bison buffalo. There you go. Okay. And of course, the correct answer that we just heard is bison bison. Yeah, they should be able to answer this. The point here is not so much. And, you know, I could put the questions at the end of the video if I wanted to. But it really works. Uh, what I'm usually shooting for here is just that the student thinks about what I've just said. This is not so much an assessment as it is a learning enhancement. So I'm just going to put this right here. Then I'll save that uh, question. And there I get a little um, marker on the timeline that shows me where I've put that question. Okay, so I can come back and edit this later. I don't have to look you know, for the questions. And my little marker has a little pencil in it indicating that I can go back at any time and edit that question. If I realize I forgot to correct to um, select the right answer or something like that, I can go back and check it. 
All right, let's now we just continue. And there's no doubt about who has the right of way here. There's something on the order of 5,000 of these magnificent animals that live within the bounds of the park. Uh, throughout the United States, the Western United States now, there's something about uh, like a half a million of these animals living today. In the 1500s, there were 30 to 50 million of them darkening the western prairies. Okay, sounds like another possible question. Uh, uh, probably another multiple choice question. How many American bison are alive today? And they heard 30 to 50 million, but that was before the advent of European settlement. They heard 5,000, because that's how many live within the bounds of the park, of the Yellowstone Park. Or uh, they also heard 500,000. Or I could just give an answer that uh, uh, they never heard, see if they were paying attention at all. And the answer is probably around 500,000 total and safe. So there's just nothing to this process. Um, it's no more difficult than making up a, an objective test under any circumstances. And it's easier in many ways, because as you go through the video, you're, you know, things are, you're prompted to remember things or, uh, you know, questions just suggest themselves from the narration. And there's nothing quite like being up close and personal. <laughs> as long as you're inside a sturdy vehicle. Incredible animals. Okay, and I think those were probably the, the two uh, relevant spots in this video where questions might make sense. But again, if I hide the question markers from students, they'll not know that there's not another question and they'll have to keep going to the end of the video to see their results. Okay, so I'm gonna say that's good enough. Uh, you, you see the idea. The other two types of questions you can insert, of course, are um, true, false, and multiple answer, but they're done basically the same way. Then I, when I'm finished adding questions, I just click done up here. And that video now has a quiz embedded in it. I can tell that from my, if I forget I've done that, I can tell that from my Canvas Studio um, library by looking for that little symbol there in the upper right hand corner of the video tile, the little rocket ship or space shuttle or whatever it is, that's the symbol that Canvas uses to denote a quiz. So that reminds me that there's a, a quiz in this, uh, um, in this video. And that's all there is to creating it. There's just, it's just doesn't, particularly if the video is not very long, which the best instructional videos are as short as possible to cover the material. If the video is not very long, it doesn't take any time at all to add a quiz to it. Uh, just a little bit of thinking about where you might insert the questions. It really doesn't make that much difference how uh, involved or challenging or clever the questions are. Just when that question pops up, the student is forced to think back over what you've just said and shown them. And that's the real value in my mind of, of this technique. So, um,
no way to make that more difficult, I don't think. Now, as I mentioned earlier, your Canvas Studio library is not visible to your students. So in order for your students to be able to view this video and take the quiz, they have to, you have to share the video and the quiz with them. And it has to be done in Canvas. This is something, uh, this is a, a feature that will not work if you share the video with the students outside of Canvas, which you can do but they won't see the quiz. So we're going to have to share this with them in our Canvas course. We can do that either as an ex what's called an external tool link in a module. We can just put a link to uh, this in a module in Canvas. <coughs> or we can somewhat more Engagingly, we can embed this video in a Canvas page using a, what's called an app embed. So let me show you how to do those two. They're, uh, they're not terribly uh, uh, they're not complicated at all either. So let's go to Canvas itself, back out of Canvas Studio and go to a Canvas course. I've got a Canvas Studio sandbox I use here that I can do anything with and not screw up an, an active course. And here I have made a module for today's class that has nothing in it right now. If I want to share that video with my students, I just add a link to the module using the add item uh, icon, the plus sign in the title bar of the module in the usual way. If you use Canvas at all, you're very familiar with this. And the content type that I'm going to add is external tool. That's one we don't use as much unless you use a lot of uh, uh, linked questions out of a publisher's resource like my math lab or my uh, 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 you know my whatever lab they have Pearson has a, a my lab for just about every subject area now but in this case canvas studio is an external tool relative to the canvas LMS they are not the same systems they're tightly integrated with one another but they are not the same running on the same servers, using the same memory, and so on. So this will be an external tool link. So I select that, and then I get a list of, of all the external tools that are available to us here at the district in, with our Canvas system, but one, uh, one of those certainly very uh, prominently featured is Canvas Studio right there. So I select Canvas Studio, and when I do that, since Canvas and Canvas Studio are so tightly integrated with one another, Canvas goes and pulls up your Canvas Studio library for you. So you can find that video that you want to use. There he is, and that's, and I see right away that there is a quiz in that video, so that's the right one. And once I've picked out the video I want, I just mouse over it and hit select. Now, I have two options about the embed here. I have a standard embed and a so-called video quiz embed. You can guess which one we want here. The standard embed allows you to use the video and share the video without the quiz, if you want to do that for some reason. But if you want the students to see the quiz questions as they're playing the video, then we click Video Quiz Embed and go to that tab. Then we have to, it makes us pick the quiz that we're going to use because you can have more than one quiz in a single video. The students will only see one of them at a time in one embed, but you could conceivably, I, I've never run into a circumstance where I thought it was necessary to have more than one quiz in the same video, but maybe you want to 
mix it up so that people don't share their answers and so on. I don't know. But um, once I select video quiz embed, I then um, click the embed button down here in the lower right. And then one more step, I have to add that item link to my module by clicking the add item button, which is fairly standard. And there I get a link named Canvas Studio to that video and its quiz. I can, you know, that's, and it always says Canvas Studio, regardless of what you name the video. That seems a little strange, but it's easy enough to go here to the context menu out to the right from the link there and edit that and what the edit allows you to do is change the title. So this is the uh, Bison video. All right. And it's never a bad idea with video to load the video links into a new tab, a new browser tab. Uh, they tend to play better that way. So I'll update this now. So now my link says Bison Video and not Canvas Studio. If I publish this uh, whoop, I need to do that. If I publish this uh, module and the video, now students will be able to see it. Demonstrate that. We can go to Student View in Canvas. Now we're in effect logged in as our test student and there's that link and the student can just click on the link and it tells them to load the Bison video in a new window. They just click there and here's their Bison video quiz. It's not difficult for them to figure out what to do. Get started. Here's an example of the type of ad hoc instructional video production you can do with that video studio you carry in your pocket, your smartphone. This is, notice the question markers on the timeline. The students could click on those and jump ahead to them. That's why it's maybe advisable to hide those markers from students. Uh, which was an option we had when we first created the quiz. But I'll tell you another story about that in a minute. Okay. This is the North Road in Yellowstone National Park. And these are American bison. Scientific name, bison, bison. That's an easy one to remember. Boom. You'd think they'd get that right every time, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, we know we're all we've all been at this long enough not to have those illusions. But um, I'll get that one right just for the sake of argument. And then, or I can rewatch. Here's an example of the type of ad. I'm going to jump ahead that time. <laughs> so I it it could uh, you know if I need to go back and. Do it again, that's just wonderful if the student has the patience to go back and rewatch that rather than just guessing. But now I'm if I'm happy with my answer, I just continue. And there's no doubt about who has the right of way here. There's something on the order of five thousand of these magnificent animals that live within the bounds of the park. Uh, throughout the United States, the western United States now there's something about uh, like a half a million of these animals living today. In the 1500s, there were 30 to 50 million of them darkening the western prairies. I'll miss this one. And there's nothing quite like being up close and personal 
as long as you're inside a sturdy vehicle. Incredible animals. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead. And boom. When they finish, they can either submit the quiz, or if they don't feel good about it, they can replay and go back and do the whole video again and just retake the quiz. I'm going to, I'm going to hold what I got. Submit the quiz. And now I have the uh, option to get quiz results. Well, 50-50. <laughs> it took me 2 minutes and 59 seconds, so I, I did back up once. I get one out of two points, but this is not going to be recorded anywhere as we've created it at this point. It's just giving the student feedback on how they did. And then the questions are displayed for them and they can see what they got right and what they got wrong. And it tells them the correct answer for the one they got wrong. And you can't change that. It's going to do that. So this, this has just become a learning experience for the students. And if they want to do better, they can go again, they want to try it again, they can go back and retake the quiz and play the video through again at this point. So there's just all sorts of uh, opportunities for learning here. And then when I'm done, I can just close that tab and I go back to uh, uh, Canvas and I can proceed to the next link in the module. Which, of which there's not one now. The alternative to just putting this link in the module is to, and I have to leave student view to show you this, is to just, is to embed the video into a Canvas page. And standard options for displaying videos in uh, Canvas. I can add a canvas page to the module. I'll create the page. And I have to give it a name. I've used this name before, <laughs> so I'm going to have to make it Bison Video 2 and uh, add the item to the module. That adds a blank page to the module. There's nothing there yet. We haven't linked the video in, embedded the video, or anything. Um, so we'll have to edit this page by, and you do that just by clicking on the name of the page. It brings up the empty blank page, and you edit using the edit button here. And now I get the rich content editor. I can put in some, maybe some text here. Um, American Bison in Yellowstone National Park. Maybe I'll go back and spell American, right? <laughs> all right. And, I, you know, I have all the usual text editing tools here that we have available to us in uh, the rich content editor. I'll center that. And now I can embed the video with the quiz. That is done, since this is in Canvas Studio, that's done using this little electric cord icon here. The um, uh, If you mouse over that and hold it a second, it will tell you that's the apps icon used to say external tools in the old rich content editor, which was a little bit more consistent with the rest of Canvas, but what the hey. Just the electric cord, and there's a little down carrot next to it. You click that, and you select the external tool that you're going to embed content from, which in this case is Canvas Studio. And again, you get the Canvas Studio, and I don't know why that that this is a quirk in the interface that uh, little 
bit of menu keeps showing up, but that's we're not going to use that. So I just scroll down again and I find that video I want. And that one has a quiz in it because I can see the little space shuttle there. So I just select that video and select, just as I did before, video quiz embed. Choose the quiz and embed. And here's what that looks like. So now I just save that and publish it in the module so that students can see it. Go back to the module. The student clicks on Bison Video 2. It looks like this. So it's a little more engaging than just that naked link in the uh, uh, in the module. Also, I don't have to worry about opening it in the new tab. It automatically uh, opens it properly. And then they just click get started and it's the same experience that they that they had the other way. So we don't need to look at that again. But that's a, the second way to share a video uh, with an embedded quiz from Canvas Studio in Canvas. And again, if you want the students to be able to take the quiz, you they have to access it through Canvas. All right. As I said, that score, the, what, how well they did on that quiz, isn't recorded. It's just, they see it, they get the feedback, and then they move on. There's no permanent consequence to it. There's no contribution to their grade. But you have the option to, to um, award a grade for this and to have it count toward their final grade which may make them a little bit more uh, attentive as well. So that's certainly worth knowing how to do. It's not a whole lot. It's really no more difficult than uh, just embedding the video for them to watch and, and take the quiz. Um, let's see. Bring Canvas back up here. And I'll go back to my module. And I'll add something again to the module, but this time I'm going to add an assignment as opposed to an external tool link or a Canvas page. I'll create a new assignment and I'll call this Bison uh, Video Assignment 2. Again, I've done this before <laughs> in this course, so. Uh, just to keep confusion at a minimum. Um, so I just name the assignment. This is very much like embedding it in a page. I add the item and I make sure it's published. Then I go and I just click on the name of the link that I haven't created. All I have here is a blank assignment. Um, I to edit. And, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I can edit it. Exactly. Oh, yes. You're absolutely right. There's the name of the assignment already. I don't really need any directions for this assignment. It's pretty obvious. They're going to watch the video. I can add a number of points. I can determine the number of possible points this is worth in my grading scheme. It's cleaner though not mandatory to make this number of points evenly divisible by the number of questions in the video otherwise they'll end up with grades like you know uh, uh, 75.6 percent or something like that so I'm going to make this 10 points or two questions that makes each question worth five points right all right um the uh, submission type is the key here, is what makes this work. From, for submission type, you select external tool. 
just like we did when we were creating that link in the module a little while ago. And when we select that, we get this find button that allows us to pick which external tool we're going to be pulling from. And in this case, of course, as it has been, the what we want is Canvas Studio. From here on out, it's going to look very familiar with what we've done previously. It brings up the Canvas Studio library, my Canvas Studio library. I can scroll down, find the video, just as I've done before. Select it. Video quiz, select video quiz embed. Make sure I've got the video, the quiz selected, and then embed the quiz in the assignment. And this time, for some not quite explainable reason, to complete the process, I have to click this button in the lower right hand corner of the dialog box that says select. While standing on your left foot facing to the north and waving a rubber chicken around your head. I don't know why. Select. All right. And it's probably a good idea to load this tool in a new tab. <laughs> but that's the default. So, And then I just scroll to the bottom here. I can set uh, due dates for this and uh, availability dates just like I can with any other assignment. I can determine how many, uh, how many times the students can take it. Uh, the default is unlimited, so they can take it as many times as they like. And then um, click Save. So now when a student comes in, let's go to Student View and Modules. The student comes in and proceeds to take this or to satisfy this assignment. Um, they're asked to load it in the new window because I selected that option. Then they, the process of them watching it and taking the quiz is exactly the same as it was before. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. Here's an example of the type of ad hoc instruction. This is why I left the question markers visible, so we wouldn't have to watch the entire video again. So we know that uh, this is bison, bison. I can continue. And there's no doubt. Then I can jump ahead to the next question. This is what they will do if you make these markers visible. So think about that. And I'll miss this one again. And now I'll go. There's nothing. Quite. I'm gonna, knowing there are no further questions, I'm going to jump ahead so we don't have to watch that again. And now, just as we were prompted to before, we're prompted to either replay and take it again or submit the quiz. You always have a chance to redo it. And view the, re view the results. So I got 50% uh, on this quiz. One point out of two. But that's not what's going to go into the gradebook. Remember we said this, we told Canvas this was worth 10 points. So I will just close that window and leave student view and go back in as me, as the instructor, and let's go to the grades, the gradebook and scroll out to the right here where that probably is there's bison video assignment two here's my test student and he got a five on it and that's now part of my grading or of my uh, grade computation so you can give them credit for their effort um, works like a charm every time. It works so well that we decided to make use of this in online learning pathways. For years, we've been, at, you know, we, we've been recording these professional development sessions for years. And uh, the recordings are always available to watch on demand anytime you like, as often as you like. And for years we've had people say, well, you know, I, I, 
I couldn't make the uh, session, but I really like to be able to watch the recording and get the flex credit for it. And that didn't seem unreasonable because let's face it, flex credit is a, the flex credit system is an honor system anyway. So I trust people to just watch the video, but, but we were never quite able to sell that to the powers that be. <laughs> there had to be some accountability built in. Well, these quizzes provide accountability. So what we've done is we've created a Canvas course that anyone can enroll themselves in. It's down here somewhere. <laughs> there it is. Professional development for educators, on-demand professional development. Um, just explains what I just said. And then you can go here and it takes you to the modules. And so far we have three uh, recorded professional development sessions that people can watch, like whiteboarding and Zoom. Here's the embedded video. And here's, the, well, actually that's just a picture. But to, and this explains the process. Uh, describes what's going to happen and so on, as we've just seen. And then you click here and you get started. You can full screen the videos. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning. And at this point, the debate was, well, are we going to hold people to not jumping ahead and seeing the questions? And being and answering the questions, <laughs> or are we going to um, leave the question markers visible so that just a little, at least people know where the questions are and what the what the what's coming? Um, there was about a 50-50 split <laughs> among online learning pathways staff. I'm not going to tell you which side I came down on <laughs> on that question, but it was decided to leave the question markers visible. So when, uh, let's say right here. So we're going to take a look at those two this morning and how you can use them to simulate or replace that uh, physical whiteboard in the classroom. And one nice thing about these apps is very often they are actually a good deal more visible to your students uh, and e more easily seen by your students than the physical whiteboard in the classroom, particularly for the, uh, the back row crowd who <laughs> come in and stay as far away from you as they possibly can and are squinting, you know, and trying to see what you're writing on the whiteboard up at the front of the room. Um, these whiteboard apps will be right on the student's computer or their smartphone or their tablet and where they can view them. Indeed, they can... I started too far back. <laughs> they can zoom into them if they need to during a Zoom meeting. Well, we still got so time. there are certain advantages to these virtual whiteboards. Even if, they're per, even if there's a little bit of a learning curve for, uh, for you and a little bit of practice required to get uh, facile with them. Just as we had to practice when we first started teaching, we had to learn how to write on there. We had to practice writing on the whiteboard on the wall. It's quite a different skill than writing on a piece of paper. It's something that you've all had to, had to deal with over the years. You have a similar adjustment uh, with these virtual whiteboard apps. But there are some things that will help with that, and we'll talk about that as well this morning. Okay, this was the throwaway. I can add a vi back a vital dimension. Well, that one's hard to figure out. True. <laughs> and continue. So that's how this will work. I have a question. Go on through. Yes, please. When you click on the rewatch button, does it take you all the way to the beginning of the video? No, it takes you back to, to the, the last beginning? question. Okay, last question. In this so case, you can use the questions like chapter markers then. I'm sorry? 
then uh, you could use the questions like chapter markers. Yes, you can. Ah, interesting. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> exactly the word I was running through my mind. And um, no, it just takes you back to the last question. In this case, of course, it would take you back to the beginning of the video. But like these two questions that are right next to one another here, if you if you rewatched the second one, it would only uh, take you back to the previous question. So this is available to anyone who's interested. Um, the course is uh, available uh, through a link. We have a video that goes through the process and showing you basically what I'd, I've been showing you today, a good deal more <laughs> rapidly. Uh, you just log into Canvas and join the course. There's a link to the course that is provided. Um, and I have uh, that's included in the video, uh, the video, and this information is posted every Monday, uh, is emailed every Monday, um, when Mary Kingsley uh, sends out the weekly notice for uh, professional development sessions coming up for the week, and a link to all this is uh, provided there along with a link to the course if you already know how to get in if you already know everything you need to know about um, Canvas Studio quizzes and so on or how to take them uh, there's a direct link to the course that will take you to where you can log in and join the course there's a little join this course button over here on the right and once you once you're logged into Canvas you just click that button and it automatically enrolls you as a student in the course and there's no waiting period or anything like that. So this is another option for uh, flex credit. We're adding, trying to add new recordings uh, over time. It takes a little while on a two hour recording to go through and add uh, questions. And you bet, Sharon, I will. Um, and uh, we're adding them as we can, but we hope to have a a good stable of recordings there that people can then use for flex credit any time. Like uh, that experience that we probably all had where it's it's coming up to midnight <laughs> on the last day for earning flex credit and you suddenly get an email saying that you're two hours short <laughs> on your flex obligation for this year. <laughs> and. Uh, you're desperate to find something. Well, these will be available <laughs> any time of the day or night. Uh, and you can earn, I, actually, there's like five hours. So far, there's like five hours of flex credit available there. And we're, uh, we're adding to it as rapidly as we can. All right. Well, that's everything I have for you. Uh, that's uh, quite, and Sharon, I'd be happy to answer that question. Um, the our uh, open on-demand video site is available anytime at sdccdolvid.org just type that in the location line of a browser and press enter and here you are the um now this is not of course where we're um where the open on where that um, flex course was that's in canvas but this is our uh, video tutorial site and we have on this site a navigation bar up here at the top one of a couple and one of the entries in that navigation bar is workshop archives and that's where we store all of our recorded sessions this is not where you access the ones that you're going to hope to get flex credit for. This is just for your own edification. But there we go. I'm up to about the 23rd of March. <laughs> I've got a 
I'm a little behind in getting them up there. That's something I'm going to work on over the next week and a half and, uh, or so as I'm combining uh, doing a little working vacation. I'll be out of town, but I will be checking my email. You're always welcome to email me anytime you have questions. This link, or this, this is also linked into Canvas in the Canvas Help uh, icon in the global access menu and it's SDCCD Canvas Tutorials. That takes you to the Open On Demand site. Or every time I send an email, in my email signature is that link. So if you've ever received an email from me, you can go back and find that and click on that link, uh, the active link in the uh, uh, email signature, and it will take you straight to the, to the um, site. So, um, and in fact, one of those One of the available on-demand flex opportunities here is how to use that site, navigating and finding video tutorials on open on-demand. So that's an hour of flex credit right there. Uh, so this is another way you can get to that at any time. Okay. Thanks a lot, David. My uh, pleasure. I have the question. Good. Uh, you showed us two ways of embedding this you is right. that a choice of one or is this like a two-step process that's a choice no it's a choice of one or the other okay okay Thanks. uh and whichever one strikes your fancy they both work equally well one is maybe a little prettier a little uh, sexier than the other and might engage the students a little bit uh, more the the one that uh, actually embeds the video that's what we use in in here, when you're doing these, we embed the video in a page and so that you can see, but it, it really makes very, very little difference which way you do that. All right, anybody else have any questions? Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Ended up with a good turnout here. Excellent. Yeah. For a, for a, especially for a, a Tuesday morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even Costco is usually quiet on Tuesday morning, right? <laughs> All right. Well, if you have further questions about this, if you start trying to, uh, you know, creating your own embedded quizzes in Canvas Studio, please, uh, if you have questions, please email me. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, and I hope you'll find this technique useful. I'm, as I say, it's, it's, it's something I'm very fond of. It's a, probably the best reason I know to use Canvas Studio because there are other ways to put your videos online. You, uh, Richard and I were having that discussion about Canvas Studio versus YouTube um, just before the beginning of the session today. And YouTube is a wonderful tool as well, a wonderful video hosting service for your instructional videos, and it is just as free to you as Canvas Studio is to, to you all. But um, they both have some advantages, and one of the biggest advantages to using Canvas Studio over YouTube as a hosting service is that you do have this option to embed videos. That's not nearly, it's fairly difficult to do with videos that you put on YouTube. But here it's very easy and very effective instructionally. So another good reason to use Canvas Studio. And uh, don't forget that your students have the same access to Canvas Studio that you do. They have their own Canvas Studio. They can't access your Canvas Studio library, but they have their own Canvas Studio libraries. And you can engage, uh, you, know, you can assign them to create videos uh, in fulfilling assignments in your class. You can even have them create videos that are useful to other students. The old th theory of having the students teach 
some of the class. I learned that from one of my graduate school professors who, who was very good at that. Uh, had a busy semester and decided to have us teach the class. And we learned a heck of a lot more than we did in most classes. I learned stuff I'd still, um, still treasure today in that class. And it's probably the thing that uh, uh, it was a major factor in inducing me eventually to go into education myself. So um, it can be a, a really handy thing. The concept is called renewable assignments, assignments that whose submissions have enduring value beyond just assessing the, a particular student's mastery of the subject is something that can help other students down the line, perhaps semester after semester. So you, it's a way to build a, a repository of instructional video that you don't have to create. <laughs> anyway, anything else that I can help with? I think that's good for today. Oh, for yeah, the enough for today. <laughs> I hear you. Well, uh, unless you have something else, I'll wish you a, a happy Tuesday and a, a, a comfortable and peaceful week and a safe one in that wonderful weather down there. A um, little bit nicer than what we're having up here over the last few days. Dave, are you still in the Yellowstone? No, I'm about a day's drive from Yellowstone, about six um, hours. Okay. I'm, I'm more or less here at the latitude of uh, Glacier National Park, but I'm oh. about, uh, about 70 miles west. Yeah. And this is unusual for April for us, but this was the weather three days ago here. Uh -huh. Is it still cold? Uh, it's no, it's warmed up quite a bit. This is what it looks like right this minute. Oh, wonderful, Ma. So beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're very very lucky. We we're just coming out of winter, and we, every winter up here we start thinking um, fondly of warmer climates. But it, it's yeah. <laughs> I don't think we'll be able to leave this. So. Spring is coming. <laughs> yes. Ain't quite here yet, but it's coming. <laughs> okay. Well, it's so good to talk to all of you this morning. Thank you so much, Dave. And, You're uh, amazing. Hope to see you again yeah. soon. Yes. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Take care. Bye-bye.